How's it going everyone? This is MedCat here, and today we're going to take a look at how we can get the most out of our MCAT practice exams. So all of these things that I'm going to be talking about today are focused first and foremost on replicating the MCAT test day conditions. So this is going to bleed over a little bit into some test day advice as well. So let's just jump right into it with when should we actually take this practice exam. Now we wanna be taking practice exams or even thinking about taking practice exams after we finish content review. So if you've finished going through a subject review book or through the Khan Academy course or however you choose to actually study the content for the MCAT, that's gonna be things like electrochemistry, amino acids, all those different biochemistry concepts, everything in the sciences that includes psychology and sociology, when you feel comfortable that you've gone through enough of that, you're going to take a practice exam. And that's a great way to assess where you're at relatively in your study. So when you actually take this exam is any day of the week when you actually have a free eight hour stretch. So what you don't want to do is break up the practice exam into different sections. Take it, let's say, one section on Monday, one section on Tuesday, the third section on uh, a Thursday and maybe the fourth section on a Friday. You might inflate your score that way a little bit because you're taking them all when you're well rested and haven't been focusing for a while. Part of the difficulty of the MCAT is having that mental stamina at the end of that seven to eight hour stretch when you're actually taking the exam to be able to focus, especially in that psychology and sociology section. Okay. So you wanna take it all in one span of time is what I'm trying to get at here. And then for our second point, this is a little more nuanced. If you're taking the 8 a.m. exam, and there are two times you can take the exam, 8 a.m. and 3 p.m., you wanna take it actually at the time you'll be taking the real exam. So take it at 8 a.m. and wake up when you actually plan on getting up. So try to wake up when you are actually getting ready for your 8 a.m. exam. So for example, for me, this was about at 6.15 a.m. And so the same thing is also going to go for your 3 p.m. exam. And so some people might ask, and some of my students in the past actually have asked, that if you haven't signed up yet, what do I do in that case? Well, in that case, you may actually be a little too late to register because if you haven't signed up for the MCAT and you've got a test in a couple of weeks, that ship may have sailed, unfortunately. So you definitely want to be looking at MCAT registration as soon as possible. We're talking, you know, even if your test date is six months away, it's still a good idea to take a look at when is the first date I can register and really jump on that date. Because depending on where you live, slots can fill up really quickly. If you live more in a rural area, not as much, but definitely something you want to be cognizant and aware of. If you haven't signed up yet and your exam is in six months, um, you probably don't need to be doing practice tests that early. So starting too early is also a common mistake that people make. So I wouldn't recommend starting practice exams unless you're about maybe two months out from your exam or conversely, you just kind of want to gauge where you're at as far as your MCAT studying. Next, we're going to move on to how we're actually going to set up your exam. So the first thing that we want to know, of course, is that the MCAT is an online virtual exam. So there's not going to be any pencil and paper like you may have seen maybe taking the ACT and SAT in high school. So first things first is that on actual test day, you'll be using a desktop computer. So what I recommend is that you actually either have a desktop computer and you use that or you find access to one, either through your college if you're attending school, or another thing you can do if you're not currently in college is to use your public library and maybe rent out a space to use a desktop computer for that amount of time. It might be kind of difficult to find a full eight hours, but I'm sure you could work it out with the library if you ask politely. So if you can't get a hold of a desktop computer for whatever reason, but you happen to have a laptop, what I recommend is that you actually put textbooks under your laptop to get your screen to eye level because you're not going to be looking down at your screen on test day. You'll be looking eye level with the exam. Another thing you want to do to be able to mimic that desktop is get a Bluetooth mouse for your laptop if your laptop didn't come with a mouse. Uh, I got one actually. It was very helpful and improved my aim at 
shooting creepers in Minecraft as well as actually studying for the MCAT. So it's kind of a nice double bonus there. And I've included a link in the description to really cheap Bluetooth mouses that won't break the bank if that interests you as well. So next to mimic test day for our setup, we're gonna be using a dry erase booklet and marker. So different test prep companies have these. I know personally that Kaplan has their own version of these dry erase booklets and markers. Alternatively, I don't think it's absolutely necessary that you practice with one. Um, if your friend has one, I think maybe practicing it with it a couple of times just to get a feel for what actually is gonna go on in test day might be sufficient. So alternatively, you can use a whiteboard or pencil and paper just when you're using, when you're getting ready to take those practice exams. But if you really want to go all out and get that booklet, you can find booklets online that mimic those shown to the right. They're a little bit pricier. They're around $20 to $30, which is why I'm not going to link it down in the description because I don't think that's absolutely necessary. But do know that that option is out there. So a quick Google search should be able to get you to all those products. And I included this picture here from the AAMC and Pearson View, who are the people that actually administer the test. And they give us a nice graphic of what that booklet will actually look like. And you'll see that there are a lot, there's a lot of space on that white page. And there are a lot more pages in this booklet than you'll actually probably need. So that's something that people often worry about is that, am I going to have enough space with this booklet? Because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of space. But truly, there are going to be pages and pages of this. So it's very unlikely that you'll actually run out. And if you do run out of space, that might be an indication that you're writing too much on your exam. Then finally, point number three, we definitely want to clear our desk of anything that's going to distract us or anything we won't have on test day. Because again, on test day, our desk is going to be completely clear of all this paraphernalia. That includes things like notes, beverages, including coffee, sadly. I'm a big coffee fan, so that one was sad, but I had to do it. And then iPhones, iPads, of course, anything that's going to have an alarm. So try to set a do not disturb function on your computer that you're taking the exam on so that you're not distracted by any extraneous things. Because okay. focus is a very big deal on this exam. Last but not least, we're going to look at how we actually review our practice exam. So one big thing that people get wrong all the time is trying to review it the same day. If you do that, you'll quickly find you're just going to burn yourself out. It's already a very long, strenuous exam. In my opinion, the most difficult graduate entrance exam in the U.S. So definitely give yourself some time to actually go over it the next day or even, you know, next week, however that fits into your schedule. My second point is expect review to take a while. Take it. Expect it to take at least as long as your actual exam or seven to eight hours. For me, it was actually about 15 to 16 hours when I was studying for my actual exam. And for a lot of my prior students, it takes around that amount of time, especially depending on how much content you need to go back and review. For example, if you miss a question, let's say on electrochemistry, you may need to go back and do some other third party practice problems to get a real good handle for those electrochemistry problems moving forward. And that would be included in that review time. Third, we're gonna to wanna to review content we may have overlooked, so we kinda of already covered that with the electrochemistry. And number four, we want to log each question we missed or were unsure of. So this latter part right here, we're unsure of, requires some humility because oftentimes we think, oh, I definitely knew that. But we may have gotten to the right answer on a problem for the wrong reasons. Just like we may have gotten the question wrong even though we had the correct reasoning because of a silly mistake like picking the wrong answer. Okay. So it's gonna take a little bit of humility and it's gonna take a long amount of time to log each question, but you can do this in several ways. One way you can do this is with an Excel spreadsheet. So you can, uh, Excel's through Microsoft Word, you can also use Google Sheets, which is free online. Another way I like to do it, another free resource, is Anki. So I would put those questions in an Anki spreadsheet and of course not share them with anyone because that's private information from the AAMC that we paid for, but just use it for my own personal studying so that I was able to review those questions later on and take them as if they were freestanding discrete questions. One question that people have um, when I tell them that I use Anki for that review is, how I actually review practice questions that were embedded in passages. 
So do I screenshot the entire passage and put it in that card? Well, not exactly. What I do is I put all the relevant information in that passage needed to solve that question in that Anki card. Okay. And if all of this isn't making any sense to you, that's totally fine um, because Anki is a very specific app. And if you've never heard of it before, I don't recommend starting it just for the MCAT because there's a bit of a learning curve to get there. And there are plenty of videos online on how you can actually use Anki. And I actually have a video on how you can use Anki most effectively for your MCAT. And I'll put that link in the upper right hand corner of this video right now if you want to take a look at that. And with that, uh, that concludes this video. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.